Taking so by the way, morning. speaking of which, so you guys talked about like how you guys would call up your brothers. And if I call my brother to come fight a dude, that's going to be like 16 to 18 hours before this dude even gets here. My ass will yep. be dead. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, man, get so, on a plane, man. Go ahead and charge. Fight, charge I need cards. to fight my own battle. Okay. Oh, no. TV, that's right, GB TV, season two, episode 38. 38, 38, 38. Yeah, we're on 38. 38, great number, 38. Not, not like 69, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have, to, I have to stop. What the hell? There's, there's a hand in front of Regan's face. And every time he moves, it looks as if the hand is like up his nose. I don't know if like your if it's your mouth. Oh, it's my mouth. Is it gone? It's your mouth. Is it gone? (laughs) Is it gone now? Can you see it? (laughs) Can you see it? (laughs) Well, happy Tuesday, people. Yeah. (laughs) That's right. It's Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. And for Taco my name, Tuesday, Tyrod Tuesday. It is um, Tata Tuesday. You gotta love it. Thank Good you. vibes Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, I, well, hold up. I forgot to introduce who I am. I'm RL. Uh, to the right of me, I have my man DJ PRS One, and uh, right below me, I have the lovely Doctor Alicia Gayati. And well, first of all, how are you guys doing? Everybody good? Yeah. Everyone is a okay. That's good. Well, hello, Alicia. Alicia's good. I'm I'm good. I'm gonna shout out real quick, Ms. Betran. I know it was a little bit uh, a little while for us to get on. We had a little bit of technical difficulties trying to do the stream that everywhere. So we just went back to the default. Um so Ms. Betran, thanks for watching. Judy! <laughs> the Jute says on here, Judy Barron. Uh thanks for watching, Judy. Uh, let's see who else we got jumping on. Mikey McCoy should be jumping on soon. All right, well, we can let it roll. Hey, so we are going to be discussing several things this week. We was uh, talking about the royal family before we uh, went live. Um, uh, very interesting thing over there. Um, you know, they they have a young black man that was born into the family and is going to take the. There's the next heir to the throne, apparently. They, they're, they're, you know, and then, I don't know. They disown in the black baby, y'all. They, they say he can't be. He can't be. He can't be a princess. He can't be a prince. Can't be. He can't be anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Welcome to Zamunda. How about <laughs> that? Hey, hey. Did y'all watch it's coming to a market too? No. I had to watch it, man. It's a cl- it was supposed to be a classic. I expected it to be a classic, but it was fun. It was funny. It was, it was good. It was, it was like a good one. time. Everybody's complaining, man, it ain't shit. Oh, man, you guys, hey, it was great for me. Snipes, it was. Snipes is, you know, Snipes was funny. Uh, every, yeah. Me, everybody was funny, man. It was, it's, it's, it's what we used to, you know? It's a, it was a fun time, you know? Um, I don't know I'm what so people are really expected. I really don't know what they, they what wanted, did you they expect? Wanted they wanted Raunchy Eddie Murphy, you know, coming to America one, it was 80, what, 88, 89, right. so it was motherfuck, motherfuck, fuck you, this, kiss my ass. ass. It was all of that, and this was more family. Right. The royal you know, penis was clean, your highness. You know, yeah, <laughs> it was, I, was, I was disappointed. Yeah. I was disappointed. 
when I seen the three young ladies come to bathe them, right? And they had clothes on. I was like, ah. Oh. So, but you're right. Yeah. Everybody wanted the raunchy, the raw Eddie Murphy, like 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 yeah. like how he's been in the past. But he's he's a Family Guy now. His daughter he's was in the movie. sixty. Right. Wasn't one of one of his daughters in the movie as well? The middle child. The middle, the middle child. child was his daughter. The middle child was a light skinned chick on, on it. <laughs> yeah. And everybody. What you got? Even Eddie Murphy can grow up. Right. We even yeah. hey, they even had the little the one token white guy on there, you know. <laughs> the, 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 the lift drop. Yeah. No, not a lift driver. What's his name? Um, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson, right. He was a token white guy in the last one. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, he brought everybody back. You know, yep. everybody looked good. It was, um, and I never thought about this. My wife actually brought this up. You know, coming to America was um, Wakanda before Wakanda. We never, True. we never realized that. But, you know, in India, we didn't realize this. So, you know, wow, you you know, we got black people that are coming from Africa and they're dressed in gorgeous robes, they have jewelry, they're in a royal life, you know, we, we, we took it for granted because it was a whole bunch of fuck you, hey, fuck you, I'm Eddie Murphy. And hey. we can just look past it. And to see it now, uh the second movie uh in the last couple of years, really showing how gorgeous uh black people, our ancestors uh, work when they were kings and queens and, you know, held the throne them in that manner in the kingdom. You know, Rick Ross' house, you know, even though that was the, the inside of his house is gorgeous. Yeah. The inside is, my mother even said something about his house. It was a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't, I wasn't expecting um, it to be better than one. That is impossible. But it was a fun movie. Like I said, everybody was, it was just it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful, well put together yeah. like, movie. You know, it, it was Tyler Perry without all the gay shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, ain't no Medea, ain't no man dressed up as no, you know what I'm saying? I was, so I was, I was, I was good. Plus, I need some Medea. Oh, no, what's going on with your audio? Your audio keeps going in and out. I, I don't know if I'm the only one hearing it, but it's going Is in it and me? You're clear. You're clear either way, but but for it. some reason, I heard it. I, yeah, I it keeps going it. in and out. I don't know what's going on, but at least you're still clear. We can still hear you. So I don't know if you're oh. moving too far away from it. I'm you not sure, but it, your audio is going in and out. But you're we're, uh, the good thing is at least even when it's out, you're clear. So that's the good thing. We can still that's hear. Right. You. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I was I was. Um, you're great now. You sound perfect. <laughs> it, it, it could be some pubic hair in my throat. I apologize. So, <laughs> Stay in range of the mic. <laughs> he is in range because I, I, he hasn't been moving. It's just the audio somehow keeps swinging somewhere. Somebody's swinging the mic. <laughs> it's nice. It's about swinging something. I right. You got sweatpants on. That's probably why. <laughs> so anyway, so going back to our conversation about uh, the runaway royals. Oh, uh, yeah. Breakaway. So Breakout. I watched the interview uh, between... Uh, Megan and Harry, who they're now living in LA in the United States, Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, mm -hmm. and who, by the way, they're pregnant now. They're having another baby. Yeah. Um, having the a heat in California would do that to you. So, um, <laughs> yet another baby for the royals to worry about whether or not the skin tone might be a little dark. So there you That's have right. it. So finally, so they're, so they're going to buy, probably start the British version of Mixish. So finally, the Queen responded, and uh, the, the the royal family responded today regarding that entire interview that was aired in England uh, yesterday, actually. And they are deeply, and I quote, saddened by the feelings of Meghan and Harry and why they left and, and the things that they felt and went on over the last couple of years. Um, now he's sad in I public. I think what is saddening to them is the fact that this is now blown up. Yep, and public. And, and it is now into a public forum and all hearts... And empathy goes to Me Meghan and Harry. Mm -hmm. 
and the royal family is coming off looking very racist. They have now taken the one asset, and and even Harry said this in in the interview to Oprah. He said that they should have looked at Meghan as an amazing asset to that family to really bring that royal family into this new era that we are now part of such a multicultural society. We are now a, and we have been, but I say it now because, you know, just like everything, we are moving with the time and to move with that time, to have a relationship um, that develops with a, a royal still organically. It's not that they went out looking like this is, you know, coming to America and they, found a mail order bride for him this is an organic a true love relationship which is what people wanted from the royal family from the beginning and this goes back to even the prince charles and lady diana which is the reason why that relationship was such a disaster because of the fact that people they that's what they wanted they were looking for that prince and princess fairy tale and when that did not turn out to be what it was because mm -hmm. Diana made it very clear as to what she endured and what happened. And of course, now the crown is out, which I have seen all four seasons. So let me tell you, they don't look too good. So now I can tell you right now that Netflix guy, he is writing. He is like, Ooh, let me go up to like, we're, we're now on season 12 because you know, Princess Diana, that was like decades ago. So we have to catch up. And, you know, it's like we go through this and instead of embracing this perfect type of woman that came into this family naturally, because here you have, you don't have the, the, the typical African-American. She's an American, first of all. There you have, you have those two countries now joining forces through this marriage, this great union. You have a woman who is a divorcee. You have a woman who is um, half black, half white. You have all of these things. She's fair skin. She's beautiful. She's educated. She is independent. You have all of the things that would make the perfect mix for that family to really just bring them into the new age for people like you, me, m our kids to really just identify with. I remembered when that wedding happened, my daughter wanted me to wake her up at, it was what, five o'clock in the morning, our time, to watch this princess become this, this woman from the United States of America become a princess. And for the royal family to really just poop on that parade, as they so put it, shame on them. Shame on them. And now they are saddened because it's out there. It's out there now for the world to see. And they are not, they're not going to get the support. They might get the support from some of the people living in the UK. They are not going to get the support from anyone living in the United States. They're not going to get the support of all of these mixed interracial people and just people around the world because they come across now as racist bullies. Yeah. So this woman that came in to the royal family and was treated so horribly mm -hmm. that you have a prince that was born and raised into privilege to leave all of that behind and, and be on the side of his wife and now live in a country that's not even his birthplace when he is a prince. Yeah. And yeah. so there you have it. I mean, that's a mess. And I look forward to seeing how they clean this up. They, you know, first and foremost, I want to applaud Prince Harry for doing what he's done. He, he, he got married and um, he's put his wife and his family first. Mm -hmm. so I want to applaud him. Uh, I want to also applaud her for being courageous enough um, going into that situation. Let's be honest, folks. Um, you are 
black woman marrying a white man, not just any white man, but a, a white man of royalty across seas. Uh, even when you marry into a white family here and you're a colored person, you already know there's going to be people in, in that white family that have issues with your brown skin. It is what it is. Not all. And we're not even going to pretend that um, white families um, are very accepting of uh, you people being married into the family of uh, different color, you know, are cool with it. There's always going to be that one individual or two individuals who have a problem with uh, mixed uh, mixed marriages. Um, I want to get back to Prince Harry. I want to say, you know, but the, the incredible thing for me is Prince Harry grew up in this family. So uh, it's news to us, but it's not news to him. I refuse to believe that Prince Harry um, didn't know that he had people in his family who didn't feel like oh, it's okay to sleep with him, but it's uh, another thing to marry him. And it's definitely another thing to have children by the Prince Harry can sit there and play cool and innocent all he wants with Oprah with his leg crossed with the nice looking socks. But Prince Harry, that's why he said he named the people who didn't sing it, but didn't name the individuals who right. would have a problem with it. Cause, like you said earlier, process listen, of elimination. Yeah, he grew up with those individuals. He knew who they are, and um, that's why he sided with his wife. He knew moving into it, and I'm sure he told her, um, we're going to have some challenges with this, but I love you. Like you said, it's a love story. It's a beautiful love story. Um, and, Drew, and like you said, it's one that is it's needed. They should have uh, valued her more um, than what they, they did and what they are. And right now, you know, it's a mess. They have a mess. You can't clean this up, especially not before we endured the last four years in this country. You know, uh, Charles might as well go ahead and let Trump stay in his house and go ahead and get the party complete. As far as I'm concerned with the BS with this, um, it's a sad situation, but I, I really do admire how they're handling it. You know, uh, especially Prince Harry, and I say, and, I, and I'm not to take anything away from how she handled it, but for him, he grew up in a royal family. This man has never wanted for anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure there was people inside of his family that probably offered him opportunities. Like, don't leave her alone. You ain't got to worry about it. If you go this route, you want to lose this. You want to lose that. You won't be considered this. You're not going to have this. And that. Think about these things that we will get coming to us. As the elders pass on, you go this route, you want to miss this, you want to miss that. And he said, he, nah, this is my wife, this is my baby, this is my family. We go, we're going to go to another country. Not only did they go to another country, they went to Canada, for God's sake. Then they came down to California. California. I mean, they went to two countries. You know, that that is ridiculous. And they were forced basically to leave Canada because when they moved to Canada, they stepped away from royal duties. And only come to find out that their son was going to be born without a title. Uh, their son was uh, going to be born and not have any security. Here is a child, no matter what, is has royal blood, regardless. Mm -hmm. So to be born and not have that security. And so what ended up happening when they moved to uh, Canada, which is also a Commonwealth country, they stripped them at the beginning of 2020. They stripped them of salary, titles, and everything else. This was not a choice that they made, that they that the royal family made it out as if uh, Meghan and Harry decided to just kind of go their separate way. They were kind of pushed out a little. It, and it was just like RL said. It was like they were given choices. You're going to lose this if you don't conform to that. And he chose his wife, his wife's health. She was to the point where she was begging and searching for help uh, for her mental state of mind during that pregnancy. And she was told no. I mean, it was really just very frightening. It was shocking, all of the things. And a lot of those things, I have to say, were admirable the way they have kept it to themselves and they endured all of this until now they are in that place and I give them I am so supportive of them speaking their truth because they should they should because we didn't realize it but 
the British tabloids basically destroyed Megan on a daily basis, front page constantly. And these are the same tabloid newspapers that are um, having Christmas parties at Buckingham Palace during Christmas time. And so when you think of that uh, tangled relationship with the media and the royal family, and it's that, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And, and she basically stated the people, her team that was supposed to be protecting her mm-hmm. and, and those that were supposed to be kind of like, you know, telling the truth and, and, and kind of like throwing those stories off to the side. They weren't. They weren't doing that for her. She was really just left to the wolves. And so Harry right. protected his wife. He is a true prince, in my eyes, because that's what a prince does. You know, you you marry this woman and you sweep her off, off her feet and you take care of her. And he left and came to the United States only with the inheritance from Princess Diana that was left to him. He received nothing else from the Windsor family, from his title as Prince Harry, nothing like that. And that's how they were able to build their life here in America. And of course, with American friends like Tyler Perry that offered his house and security to them when they moved to the United States. Ridiculous. You know what? I don't know about how anyone else feels. I love me some royalty and some prince and princesses. And you know what? You could be the prince of America. I don't care. Like, be Prince Harry and, and Princess Meghan in L.A. I'm good with that. I'm Absolutely. With that. Absolutely. And they can build off of that. They can go ahead and, and do their own thing. And uh, the, Kardash- the Kardashians are, are done. We can do a new thing with uh, the prince and the princess and uh, their offspring. Yeah, uh, build a monarchy here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Well, let me read some of the comments real quick that we got. Um, I got Miss Betran on here. Miss Betran's going in. She said, "Um, look, they need to stop looking at Diana's death as an accident, and start looking at that as a murder. There are gangsters in the royal family, and they killed her, plain and simple." Um, she also said that um, Prince Harry said that he feared that history would repeat itself. Uh, she said, oh, he knew what was up. And I always felt that Harry was one of the sane ones in that family. Then she goes on to say that uh, Megan said that they promised to protect her from the tabloids, and they didn't. They literally broke their promises to her. Doesn't surprise me. They protected. They didn't protect Diana either. So okay. that could be the reason they ran, because, you know, it's it's it's. As she said, it might be gangsters in there. On the, when you're on the inside, you know what's going on. You know what I mean? It's it's one of you those things. Not watch The Crown. That is some. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm gonna have to watch it now. I see the look on your oh, face. Oh, oh. I know. I was watching Bridgerton. That was you know pretty. Let good. me yeah. tell you. I just I was having sleepless nights. I had bags under my eyes. I was miserable the next day, but I was up watching that Crown. Like I was binge watching. Right. Because it was hard to rip your eyes away. And and what I love about that is the fact that I, I'm one of those reality people. Like I like I for example, I like realistic fictions. I like things that I can relate to. And I've always been obsessed with the royals, um, probably being born in you know, a, a once British owned island, controlled island. I just feel as if it was something that was always very intriguing. As Betran said, Alicia, girl, we got to talk about the crown. Yes. And <laughs> let me tell you, I just could not keep my eyes off. And the fact that the crown, the person that gave them and provided them with the information were people that were actually there. They were around. Like, I'm one of those diary readers. Like someone writes a diary, I'm all up in it because you know that stuff has you know to do, and you know that that queen is sitting there no every diary, day man. and she is writing. That ain't wrote none in the past. Writing in that diary, I want to read that all. Of I'm glad I ain't wrote no diary <laughs> in the past. Yourself. That's the stuff I want to read because the best, oh, the best tea comes out of those diaries, those slave narratives, 
Ooh, don't teach Ooh. those slaves to write now. They write them a diary. <laughs> West Indian right. Chronicles. Well, somebody That's help this thing. woman. Somebody help this woman here, man. Those diaries. I'm t- and Frank. That's that. I'm telling you, some of the best information comes out of those diaries. Hey, I just, I, you know. Come ask. Too much. Come you ask. Been, you've, been, you've been quiet, uh, Regan. What's, what's going on? What's going on? You've been quiet. I've been reading. I've been listening. I'm reading and and I'm reading the comments. The comments are going in. That's what I was reading. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of those things where you know it's it's she was the token black woman at the time, and she does have like wait, she's a default divorcee plus she's black, so she's got like you know that going against her. Um, yeah, yeah. I got Mister Mark Little on here. Mark it's Little not. said it. He has family over there. And he said they they do respect their women a lot more than American men, and because it's the culture, that's what Mark Little saying. Um, okay, well, I gotta go meet to Britain. Huh? You gotta go, go to find Britain. myself a little Prince Harry. I can I can shake some stuff up in that royal family. Mm. Buckingham <laughs> Palace, they're not ready for me. But well, I don't know. They, they, see, that's see, the problem. Let strong. me tell you, I would end up. I would be that person that would be dead. I don't know, but remember, Britain is the capital of India. That's right. <laughs> Damn. I would fit right in. For those There's y'all, so many Indian India, people in, in, in almost every know. Indian movie you look at, they end up somewhere in London. We're in London. It's the Indian motherland. <laughs> yes. Yes. <something>. Oh my <laughs> lord. So okay, what was it? We we had another topic going. So this jump on actually quick. now trend it it kind of leads into our next. Topic of um to wear a condom or not to no <laughs> marriage and finances stop them so you gotta protect yourself um so basically how long should you date before getting married oh this this right this this I'm gonna tell you how long you shouldn't go on <laughs> forever <laughs> yeah man. You consider yeah. common law. What are you waiting for, man? You got kids with a woman? This you is marry her yet? my thing. <laughs> I, the old, when, when I was younger, when you when you know when you were a kid, you were outside, you, you know, you mess with the little girls and they got the dolls, and you your your playhouse and shit like that. And it's every day, you know, almost every day. If you have, you know, female friends, you know, little girls in the neighborhood, you like eight, ten, eleven, you get kind of get away from it and you start dating. I don't know what is going on with. With, us, with our adults today that think it's it's cool, and especially the men, to date a woman for seven, nine, ten years, two kids, four cars, two <laughs> bankruptcies. I mean, what the? What are you waiting on? They're trying to repair their credit. <laughs> <laughs> what I just as it's this you are playing house. You are a grown ass. Man and woman, and you're playing in house. I oh, just don't get some it. people, in all honesty, that they are they come from um, a very shattered background, and they they feel as if maybe marriage is sort of a curse. And there's some people that feel as if they have a happy life, maybe living with someone or dating someone, and You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And they feel as if, you know, so many people get married and then they end up in divorce that if it's going well and everyone's fine and everyone's happy, then, you know, why bother? What's the big deal? Because marriage really is just that legal binding contract. If you're doing everything else, now, don't get me wrong. I am a huge supporter of marriage. I am I started off with the Megan and Harry. I I love that fairy tale and fall in love and all that good stuff. But I do think that people need to, especially in this day and age, people really need to um, take their time with regards to jumping into a marriage. Um, And for several reasons, because we have so many things now that we deal with on an everyday basis that people back in the sixties and the seventies and even the eighties didn't deal with social media being one of them. Those outlets of 
people meeting people, that's a scary thing because you could have, like, for example, the people that are online dating, you're online dating and that person is then chatting, dating, going out, meeting, talking to about 10 other people. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But it's, you know, these are some of the factors that you we deal with today with dating. And I mean, I go back, I, I'm old school. I believe in the, you know, the, the whole the courtship and all that stuff. But in actuality, it's very difficult to find guys like that. Just like guys are looking for that, that traditional type of woman, the woman that would come home and as soon as they open the door, it smells like cookies. And oh, oh, she cooks, and oh, she looks wonderful, and she smells so nice, and the children are all lined up, just showered, and yes, and this is what it's—it's it's just the unrealistic expectations of what people are expecting, because this is what they've seen, and 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 sometimes it's just that's not the reality. Nope. It's just not, you know, and so people get their hearts broken because it's like, but it should take take ten years, and they're like, "This is not what I signed up for." But it shouldn't take ten years. That's right. It shouldn't take ten years. Jacked up for ten years to figure figure that out. out. Uh, Look, Dayton, three, no, two, no more than three years. No more, two, no more than three years. And, you, and I appreciate you giving them a way out, uh, Alicia. There's no way out for me. No way out. Shut this out. You know what I'm saying? If you got a shattered past, you got a shattered past. And go get spayed or neutered. You know what I mean? You shouldn't even have a key if that's the case. Um, my, th- this is my thing. and Because I, I have children, and um, I know they, they, they you know, like people now, my oldest, she has a boyfriend or whatever, you know, and they're not engaged yet. This is my thing. Right? They're not engaged yet. Not yet, not yet. And if they do, you know, congratulations to them. If they don't, then they need to make up their mind what the fuck they're going to do. Go find somebody they're going to actually get married to. Stop wasting each other's time. There's somebody exactly. out there for you. There's somebody out there for you. When you're in a relationship and you go past three years, four or five years, and, and people do say, well, I see people get married and get divorced. All right, what, what you think is okay to have five or six boyfriends in seven years? I mean, shit, out of half of those boyfriends, you cheated on them. So you've really been sucking about 14 different penises in seven years. So that doesn't make it no better. Just want to say hi, mom, for being online. Oh, talk about stuff like that. My mama is listening. (laughs) Forgive me, mom, but I'm I'm being serious. I'm I'm being dead serious. You know, when when I met, when I, so I got out of a, uh, relationship it was over it was it wasn't horrific but it, it it was just bad i i was dating i was dating the women i was out having fun when i met my wife i knew she was the one i knew i knew she was the one because out of the last seven or eight months i was running around here chasing ass this was the one ass i didn't want to chase you know, I was hoping that she would give me conversation. I was hoping that she would give me the time of day to get to know her. Hopefully she get to know me and like me. You know what I mean? And after and because, you know, I was older, mature and I seen what was out there and I've been through relationships. After three months, I proposed. I was like, man, fuck this. I'll be a fucking fool to let this woman go. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck that. This woman is perfect for me. Right. So I proposed. And I'm going to tell you how I proposed to this was some crazy shit. We sitting in the house, right? We watching TV. I had to be at work. Uh, I was working three to 11 then. So it was like 12 o'clock. We watching TV and uh, I'm just looking at it. She don't even realize I'm sitting on the couch and I'm just looking at it. I don't even know what the fuck we was watching. So I said, I'm going to be right back. She's like, where are you going? I said, don't worry. I'm going to be right back. I'm, I'm going to come back and then I'm going to go to work. But I'm going to come around. I'm, I'm going to be right back. I jump up. I go to the mall and I go to a jewelry store and I buy a fucking engagement ring. I drive all the way back home. Now, mind you, it was like 1240 when I got to the mall. I got to be at work at 230. You just muted yourself, bro. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So it's like 
two and two for two, and I came to the house. You excited? Hey, hey, she and, around, and maybe she muted the story. No, nah, it's like <laughs> Bill collector calling me. They want some money from me. All right. So I get in the house and I'm looking at her, and I, I got the ring in my hand. And I'm just looking at her, I'm just looking at her, and I'm like, what am I going to do? And she's like, what's up? I said, I need, you, I need you to stand up. So she stands up, and I go down on my knee and I ask her. And she's just like, and I, you know, I'm like, say yes, damn it. You know, but she says yes. And I, I just, I knew it. I knew it. I didn't need four or five, six years to go by and an additional four kids to know that I wanted to be with this woman. The mm-hmm. key word, woman. I didn't need that. I didn't need her to have my children first to know that I wanted to be her husband. In the Bible, it said, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. I knew I found a good thing. Reach, honey. Mm. So, you know, and that's the problem with a, a lot of our young men today. They get so stuck on how good she look, uh, her body, whatever her measurements are. And yeah. Just, just, do she go wild? I mean, it's the crazy stuff I hear. Do people this say. trick with her, with her fingernails and her tongue. Yeah, just, just, men, men are just so stupid. Sh- we, and shallow. We, we get caught up in stupid stuff. Ooh, say you that know, again. Say we, that we again. Get, we get, men are stupid. We get caught up in Ooh. stupid stuff. And we forget. Now when the mic's hashtag. supposed to go out, it wouldn't. Yeah, the mic was supposed to go. We forget, <laughs> that people, we forget that women are people. That is a person. You know, what kind of person do you want to be? I want to be a good person. Shouldn't you want to marry a good person too? You marrying a hoe. You Because she looked good, she twerking, and she can suck a golf ball <laughs> through a straw. Garden you know? hose. <laughs> You if, know. if twerking is the credential to find a man, hmm. she could suck the chrome off a Harley. You know, it's we're just so stupid, but that's the problem with men. It should not see you got these men who get in relationships that's not really men. You do not let your woman dictate how long it's going to be before you make her your wife. If that is the case, she don't want to be a wife. You want to be a husband. But she doesn't want to be a wife. If your woman is saying to you, we can have kids, I'm just not ready to be a wife. She's not who you need to be with. Right. You're just a sperm donor. That's, I mean, shit, she, she can do that with any other man. She can do that with a boyfriend, an ex, a dude she dating. You can't, you can't do it. Like, when you get married, that is your husband you're having a child with. There is a title there. Just like we talk about the royals, prince, princess, king, queen. Those are titles. Give me a title. Yeah. You, when you buy a car, when you buy a car, you get a fucking title for the car. You ain't get no title for no girlfriend, boyfriend. That's I'm a getting, title. Yeah, hey, <laughs> you, get, you, get, you, you get boyfriends and girlfriends in high school and in college, the drunk years. After that, you're supposed to try to find yourself someone that's going to make you a better person. To settle down with. Yeah, wife, right. husband, legitimate titles that come with paperwork. Do you know when you buy an animal, a dog, you need papers to have that dog? That's right. But you don't need papers to keep that man. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> come on. Right? <laughs> you have a child with him. You get papers for the child. It's called a birth certificate. That's you right. Get papers on that man. Come on now. Look at your oh, neighbor and say, neighbor, get that paper. <laughs> <laughs> Come Boy, on, preaching man. over here. Come on. <laughs> you got to grow up. You got to grow up. And that's what I tell my son. I don't want my son to be disrespectful to women um, in that manner. Do not waste her time. There is a man out there that is willing to give her the title she deserves, willing to make her a wife, be her husband. Mm-hmm. If you want to be her boyfriend and just play house, do not mess with her. Hey, she don't want, not, she trying to, she's trying to be a queen. Yeah, you can't. That, that's another thing that pissed me off. Oh, that's my queen. Now, she ain't your queen. Nope. Not if you ain't put a ring on it. You ain't put no ring on it. Y'all ain't married. I ain't your queen. Mm-hmm. How'd she get that title? Yeah. What they what they call them? Uh, Jezebel. She is Jezebel as of right now. <laughs> Jezebel. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, man, come on, man. I, I want to see my people. I want to see 
I want to see all people find um, that great happiness. They, you know, when you get married and this shit is good and it is right, it's a great happiness there. That's right. I know what it feels like to love a girlfriend, mm-hmm. and that's cool. You know what I mean? That shit is cool. That shit ain't great happiness. You know nope. what I mean? There's a difference. There's a big difference. You know, when you are having children with your wife, I know the difference. I've had children with my girlfriend. Right. And I'm going to tell you now, that shit is stressful because I'm thinking if this bitch, <laughs> me, she going to go get child support. You know what I mean? That's the first. Oh, my God. I got to be good to my girlfriend. Right. It's a big damn difference, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She gave birth. It just, man, it was incredible because there was my wife. And people say, oh, it's just a title. It's a title you ain't got, bitch. It is my <laughs> wife. That was my wife bringing life into the world for her husband. That is something sacred. And they don't honor that anymore. And that's nope. the problem. That's why we have all these damn issues. And I'm so proud of Prince Harry for doing what he's done. He stood by his wife because he knew before we knew that he was going to have issues. We don't have men like that, that many men in the world today. And unfortunately, we have men, women who are demanding men for other bullshit instead of the most important. Put a ring on my finger. If you really love me, give me your last name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make me, make me your wife. If you really love me, make me your wife. Because you come in five minutes. What you know that last name thing? Like, what is it, what is it? Why don't you take my, what, you know, that, that's a whole different show. This whole last name thing, this ownership thing. Like, yeah, mm, no. Not, uh, I, well, you know what? When I was yeah, younger, exactly. Yeah, who started it. that bullshit anyway? I want to know. A woman. That's the. That's no, the crazy. It was a man. That's it the was kind a of woman. decisions it men was a make. Woman. It was, those are the decisions men make. No, you're going to marry me, and you will take my last name. Her name was Rebecca Lyles. Rebecca Lyles started that. I'm lying. I don't know who the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> just make, just make it up. That, a man came up with it that's what happened men come up with these things like you shall have my last name why don't you take my last name why why don't you take my last name you married me too that's your daddy name it took mm-hmm. your daddy name how do you know that's my daddy's name right Ramon Girl, are you a virgin I, I, I don't know why everybody keep asking me that <laughs> nah, no, man. It's, it's just women are already, you know, giving birth, carrying the baby for nine months, <laughs> all this stuff. Like we, we gotta go change the last name. Then you get divorced. Then you gotta go back. You have to go now and go through the trouble of changing all your stuff back. Why? Yeah, well, I, yeah. I should go through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're right. You, I, you know what? <laughs> I agree with that. You know, so I, I think it should. I think it should be a decision. Since you're, oh. since you guys, your bodies are not changing, unless of course you ate too much chips and drank too much beer. But when when women are like having to go through and their and their bodies are changing and all this stuff and they're giving birth and you know these guys run around and your their biggest struggle you are you some cigars. He's gonna have my last name. Meanwhile, this is the air. You know, breastfeeding and all this stuff going on to and my throne. Like, you know, and it's the last name, and it's the child, and the baby, and the body, and all yeah. that stuff. And then, yeah, what, what exactly? What exactly now is the sacrifice? Yeah, what exactly he's, he's the heir to my throne. What throne? Yeah. The, what, the porcelain one you've been sitting on? <laughs> That's <basketball>. right. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no throne. You even have a seat With at the table, man. To, with regards to dating before, you know, going into that marriage and that commitment, I do feel, mm-hmm. I do feel that our generation is probably the last generation that really holds those types of values. Like, right. for example, Regan and Pam, and I can speak on this because they're here and it's public knowledge, you know, they had one of those, they, those romances that where they met and, and that connection was there and they had a really quick engagement and marriage and and now they have their happily ever after. 
But she just said no, you had a shotgun wedding. <laughs> no, they did you not. They had a beautiful <laughs> wedding. They had a beautiful wedding, beautiful engagement, all that stuff. But it was this is the thing because you had then two people that are in going into that commitment, that legal binding commitment for the right reason. Right. And now I feel with the generations that we have with social media being how ridiculous it is now. You know, everything is about, let me search this one. Let me look up that one. Ooh, look at this. Look at that. And it's like a lot, there's a lot of fakeness out there. You know, um, as, a, as a, a single person, it's scary to just go out there and put yourself out there. Who wants to date just be random? Nobody. Yeah. Nah, nah, I'll be up for Buckingham Palace. I'll go up in there. <laughs> or Bridgerton. Yeah, I, I I would be horrible. I would be horrified if I had to start dating again. Uh, it would be horrifying. I just I look at people like I look at people and I'm I'm like, yeah, you look like you would be a good fuck partner, but that's about it. <laughs> you know, I don't really see it going past tonight you know i just and with covid guess what that <laughs> doesn't even look good yeah so i just it's i don't know I didn't stop them. so i mean it's so it's it, to me it's very important and i and i honestly feel it has a lot to do with the values of each individual and and what they bring to a relationship some relationships require a longer courtship than others. And then there are some relationships where you have the two people that are in it for the right reasons and the formality is just being married. You know, yeah. so it's I, I think it all depends on the relationship. There are some people, both men and women, that have that phobia, that fear of that commitment. When in actuality they're living with the person they have a house with the person, they have bank accounts with the person, and that in itself is a commitment. But yet they feel as if signing that paper that says marriage license is going to put them in some kind of trap that they can't get out of. And what they don't realize is the fact that you just tied yourself up in a house, which is even a huge financial commitment with a person. Um, I don't think they, I don't think they realize that. And I, no. I, I find that happening. It's a little bit more prevalent with our, uh, generation of, of people that are in their twenties right now. They see it. They're, they're very career based and, and they're all about working and doing this and they, they want to be practical and they feel like, Oh, you know, we're not they're stupid. Married. We're not getting married. We're just going to like get a house together. And they're, they're the smartest, stupidest generation I, I that is that are that are around. I just I don't get it. You know, they know so much and will turn around and do something that's so fucking stupid. You be like, <laughs> like you. I, I just I I don't get it. I agree with you wholeheartedly. They will they will build they will build this great living space and be locked in together and don't realize you are you are committed already yeah you know you you got your name on all these other papers but don't want to put it on that one paper and i believe me i believe it's if it's over i want to be able to just leave this person i don't it's over it's you know and it's over instead i don't want to go through the lawyer i don't want to go through the you know the divorce proceedings you know but when you break up with a person you've been in a relationship for a while, that shit ain't just over. You you know you're sending text messages, y'all. If you got kids, now you're well. She can't. He look. I don't want my kids around this person. Oh, that's well, don't take my kids over there. You know I don't like your mother. Why my kids got to stay over there the weekend? My right. kids are staying with me. Now you got to go through a whole bunch of other. Bull it still is always going to be some bullshit. Right. I always tell people you just want to cheat. You want to be able to sleep with people. That's what it is. You can do it when you're in a relationship. You just boyfriend girlfriend. When you're married, you kind of feel guilty. Like I shouldn't be fucking you. I have a whole wife at home. I shouldn't be fucking you. Or husband. But, yeah, or husband. 
But if it's your boyfriend or girlfriend, it really, you know, it doesn't count. You know, it doesn't count. Right. You know, what counts is as long as we pay our rent on time, they won't kick us the fuck. The commitment part is not there. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it, it's sad. It's sad. I, I can't, I, I hate to see people together for 10 years. It, you didn't waste your time. I just, you could have got married after five years. You've been you dated five years. You've been married five years. Whenever you do get married, you'll be married that one year plus the 13 years y'all was dating. That's, that sounds whack to me. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> right. Whack. You know, it's like, a, well, it, well I don't know. That, that's kind of our time for now. So we'll just wish everyone there happily ever after. Yeah. Fairy tale. It's not a happy ending because that's like for massage parlors. Yes. May each nut be your best nut. Oh, Lord. Uh, so we'll continue this next Tuesday. Tune in next Tuesday when you'll hear RL says, Fuck them kids. Oh, right. Hey, you fucking kids. <laughs> Fuck them kids. I wish to say something smart. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Again, um, I, I wrap it up. I basically say, well, you know, Trini Spice FM, we're still here, still jamming. We, you know, we're going to continue jamming on. You know, as Cass says, we're going to fest again at some point. Hopefully, I can get him on the show at one point and he can, uh, you guys can hang out with Cass for a minute. Um, Nalette was supposed to also join us tonight, but, went, you know, motherly duties. You know, she's an entertainer and she has her mom, mom hat on right now. So um, we're doing that. Um, but you guys want to hear great music, tune in to any Spice FM. You know, you can just uh, download the free app on your uh, um, what you call it your android ios platforms basically any platform go to tune in uh any way you stream music just search trini spice fm I, hey you should see me you know <laughs> or hear us um it's free damn it Download yeah and it's free app. damn it free. it's free all right yeah plus as he said it's free if you get a chance go to the youtube channel and look up good vibes tv gvtv um and subscribe subscribe to the channel let's you know let's make something out of this show your support it's free. it's free again it's free you know support support us it's a damn click yo that's all it takes i ain't gonna click it um, y'all subscribe don't know to we that follow. no just click nine, the baby. damn button man what's the damn button it's the commitment of <laughs> that's what it is that's what it is right 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 <laughs> ain't you trying to commit Fuck it's not a marriage man you just gotta click the button <laughs> <laughs> You ain't got to watch the show no more. Just click it, brother. <laughs> just show your support. Just uh, click the button because you like how Dr. G looks. You know, something like that. There you, know, you go. <laughs> Says, I like how she look at her pearls and the chucks and the glasses. 1-800, friend. <laughs> or, you know, or, 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 or that you like it. You know, Click the button because you like, uh, you know, um, RL's OnlyFans page. You know, something. Check out my feet. <laughs> I ain't got shit going on, y'all. It's, I'm, I'm nothing, you know. Uh, let me let me say this: I, I I am vaccinated. I'm I got a clean bill of health, and I'll be up there. this back in summer. See, that that's what up. I like to hear. Cause I'm halfway there. I, I go for mine on the 25th. Yes, finally, Regan got his vaccine. I'm getting my second shot. Tomorrow. Got the card. There you both. go. Very exciting. Yes, so, yes. For, for all you out there in TV land thought I was bullshit. No, nope, I got it. But what you guys need to realize is that the numbers of the numbers of people uh, being hospitalized, the numbers of the deaths um, in this country definitely has gone down. Yes. Yeah. And that has a lot and, and to do with, with the, the fact with people getting the shot. Vaccinated. Exactly. So it's very important, you know, and and I know a lot of people that have been very skeptical and cautious about it. And you know what? This is this is a hurdle that we just we have to get through together as a nation. And you want to be around your family. You want to be around your friends. Do it safely. Do it safely. And, and Mani, if, if nobody ain't died by now, man, come on now. 
people, the people that died, what you need to realize, the people that died were the ones that did not get the vaccine. Because right. Didn't have a well, vaccine. I'm saying, yeah, people, they, so, nobody has died from the shot. It, well, they, we had like one death, but they're still trying to figure out if it had anything to do with the shot. You know what I mean? So enough. it could have been uh, fake news. As I'll, the take, little orange I'll, guy we knew you say. I'll take my chances. You got millions of people who've had the shot and you got one case. I'll take my chances yeah. with the shot. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. You know, our 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 president, our vice president, they both are they're both vaccinated. Uh the scientists, the doctors, they're all vaccinated. Our healthcare workers, the people that are putting their lives on the line every day, they are vaccinated. Yeah, your good Even vibes TV crew, they're vaccinated. Police officers, firefighters, <laughs> go out there and about vaccine be vaccinated so that we can all protect each other we can be normal again in some form or fashion so that's that of course is, is my platform that's my biggest thing i just want a healthy environment good man you got a whole shadow over your face man, that's the missus man she told me to wrap this shit up <laughs> she she's like wrap this shit up b yeah she's giving you back there your time Time. Yeah, wrap that shit up. It's time. Our time. You cut into her time, man. She got paperwork to prove it. Yeah. yeah she, <laughs> I, 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 she has papers on me. Yeah, so that's I, it. Exactly. She got papers. Good. Yeah. Good. Not the papers that you make it rain, but you got papers. <laughs> the next yeah. time I meet a guy, I'd be like, where's your file? He'd be like, what file? Ooh. I'm like, like don't you have paperwork where's the paperwork right 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 all right all right you can wrap them up all right good people as i sit here and look for a lighter for my wife i have to say thank you for tuning in once again appreciate all the love and the support that you guys have shown us over the last couple of years season two episode 38 savvy we love and we miss you you're a punk you need to start showing up hopefully we see you next week uh until next week peace Good night.